Greetings, dear church family. I pray that you're all well on this Wednesday morning. I'm coming to you today because I, I want to pick back up with weekly devotional messages, particularly in the Psalms. Uh, on and, and I'll be sending these out on Wednesday mornings. But before I pick back up in, in the Psalms devotionals, I wanted to just this week come before you and and share a bit of something that's been on my heart a lot. It was it had been on my heart throughout the last three months during my sabbatical. Uh, it remains on my heart, and I I, I anticipate that it will, will re- continue to remain on my heart. Um, and that is the church's witness in the world in our present uh, ple- present cultural, political, social context. Um, I know I've shared something about these things in the past, and I know so many people are sharing things about this, uh, but I wanted to come to you as your pastor this week and, and just share, this isn't going to be um, fully orbed, this isn't going to be uh, all-encompassing, but just one particular thing that I'm burdened by right now. Um, and I, I wanted to come come to you as your pastor and, and just share what's on my own heart, uh, add, add my voice to the many voices that you're hearing uh, in our culture. Uh, and here's what's on my heart. Uh, the, the, I'm deeply concerned as we engage the world as the disciples of Jesus that we make it very clear to our neighbors that we are more concerned about people than we are about politics. Uh, one of the things, and, and, and along those lines, I'm going to try to be as, as little political as I possibly can in, in this message. Um, one of the things that I, I said in my sermon a couple times on this past Sunday morning was that uh, it is the particularity of my life that gives it its true significance. It is the particularity of my life that gives it its true significance. And when I look at the church, the church's public witness in the world today, I, I, I get the concern that we're, that we tend to give off a message that we're more concerned about knowing statistics and being right than we are about knowing our neighbors and showing them the love of Christ in our words and in our actions. It's not to say that we shouldn't be concerned about statistics. We should be. Uh, it's not to be con- not to say that we shouldn't be concerned about the truth. Absolutely, we are people of the truth. We should be. But our, our speaking of the truth is always in love. Uh, and we cannot love our neighbor if we do not show our neighbor a concern to know them. Uh, and so let me, uh, and, and one of the things that it takes to know your neighbor is, uh, is to know their story. Know why they think about the world the way that they do. Know why uh, they, uh, they say the things that they say and they react the way that they react to certain things. Uh, to help you think about what I'm getting at here, uh, let me just share a bit about my story that some of you may not know. Um, many of you do know that I have a pretty checkered past. Uh, most of you don't know a lot of the details of that. Uh, I, I'm going to share one particular event in my life that may be surprising to you, uh, may be somewhat jarring, um, but I think it's important to, in, in, with regard to thinking about the stories that people have. Uh, there was a time in my life, there was a particular day on which I very well could have been shot and killed by a police officer. Uh, I very well could have been. Um, to make a really long story short, uh, and if any of you want to talk about this, I'm, I'm more than opening to talking more about it on a personal level, um, but to make a very long story short, when I was 18 years old, uh, I and and sort of a the heat uh, the, the heat of rage over something that I heard that somebody had done in my in, uh, a guy that I knew who lived sort of across town. I got my hands on a gun uh, and some bullets, and I was going to go to his house to confront him. 
in God's providence, the person who was driving the car I was in to take me to this other, this other guy's house uh, blew a stop sign, and we were pulled over. And I was high, and I was disoriented. And the officer told me to get out of the car, and I did. I had the gun in my pocket. My hand was on the gun. The handle of the gun was sticking out of the pocket. The police officer saw it. He grabbed me, tackled me to the ground, and put handcuffs on, handcuffs on me. Uh, now, he very well could have seen the handle of that gun and shot me. And as I've, uh, you know, fr from that moment, I wasn't a believer at that time. I became a believer a couple of years after that when I was 20. Um, in the past many years, whenever I hear about uh, a black person getting shot by a police officer, that night comes back into my mind. What, what would have happened if, say, the circumstances were different? What would have happened if I were black? Uh, if, I, if I were seen as more of a threat to that police officer? What would have happened if we were in the inner city rather than in the suburbs? What would have happened if um, the, the police officer who tackled me to the ground, he actually knew me? Uh, you know, uh, he lived in my neighborhood. And so what, but what if he was a police officer who didn't know me uh, and who, uh, who saw me as more of a threat once again? The, all of those things come to my mind. Uh, what, what would have happened in that situation if, if I had been shot? Imagine the turmoil uh, and the rage uh, in my parents and in the people who loved me and the rest of my family. Imagine the, the turmoil and the rage in my friends. Imagine uh, what is more, the, uh, if, if that had come on the, on the, against the backdrop of a history in which people who looked like me were pointed out as being less than human from the people who do, didn't look like me. Uh, segregation, slavery, all of these sorts of things. Uh, and even after, after, even after the civil rights movement, that, that history did not change. Uh, and, it's, and much of it is still with us. Um, I could point to some resources showing that that is the case. And again, I'm, I'm not getting political here. I'm just asking you to think about people's stories to be more concerned about peop about your neighbors than you are about statistics to to seek to see in the other person uh, the image of God regardless of what they've done or what they might be involved in in the moment because right now <laughs> I'm your pastor uh, I have a story that, um, that is very checkered, and we all have stories uh, in which we've done stupid things, like I, I've done many stupid things. Um, that plays into sort of one thing that, that has deeply concerned me in this, in this present context, um, where whether it's George Floyd or Jacob Blake, uh, a lot of times when I hear these names being talked about, they get, they get politicized. And we want to talk about, okay, what is their rap sheet? What is their criminal record? Um, all of these sorts of things. Uh, if that were people's primary concern about me when I, before I came to Christ, um, I, I, then I had less value than other people in the world. Uh, I even remember in high school, a teacher said to me, point blank, John, you're not going to amount to anything. You, 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 there's nothing good about you. Um, because he was so frustrated with the, the stupid things that I did um, and, the, and the ways. And, and the reality is, if I had kept on the course that I was on, he was right. I wouldn't have amounted to anything. I may have been shot. I may right now be dead, as many of my friends have died of heroin overdoses um, and, and various other things over the past 20 years. Um, 
But God had other plans. And God loved me, and he loves me. Your God loves the people around you. He wants you to love them. He wants you to know them. He wants you to know more about your neighbors than you do about what's going on out there. He wants you to be more concerned about people than you are about politics. And insofar as you are, you are concerned about politics, and we should be, don't get me wrong, we absolutely should be deeply concerned about, about the, na the, the, the direction of our nation. Uh, we, should go, we should vote when the election comes around. Uh, we, should, we should know the issues. We should know the candidates. I, I'm absolutely not saying that we should just retreat from the political sphere, but I am saying this. Be at least as much concerned about your neighbors the people who are in your immediate purview as you are about knowing the issues and knowing what is going on in the world at large. Um, I'll leave it at that for today. Uh, and I, there's so much, so much more that I could say, and I hope, I hope that nothing that I've said here has been misunderstood, but I, just, I felt burdened to share some of that with you this morning. Um, along these lines, uh, in the sermon this coming Sunday, I'm going to get at a bit of... I'm going to sort of address some of these related issues in a sermon on uh, on remembering the Sabbath and our mission as a church. I had planned to uh, to preach that sermon two weeks from now, but I'm going to I'm going to move it up to this week uh, because I want us to think about what how our worship as a church and what our gatherings as a church how that relates to uh, our mission our witness and our testimony in the world uh, in, in our current cultural, political, social context. Um, and so if you, if, if you want to know more about any of what, I, what I'm thinking about any of these things, again, I don't want to get political. I know that we have people in our church who are, who are, on, to, who are toward the left and toward the right, and I love you all. And um, I, I think that we all, we all desperately need each other, uh, desperately need, need each other. But I do want to help us to think through what it looks like to be disciples of Jesus in the world, because that is really our main concern, is it not? Uh, we are first and foremost, as, as Paul tells us uh, in Philippians, we are first and foremost citizens of heaven. Uh, we are citizens of another kingdom, uh, and we are seeking to bring the ideals and the values of that kingdom into this present age and be people of peace and reconciliation in the world. So the Lord be with you today. Hopefully this gave you some peace and, and not more angst and turmoil, but I, I wanted to share some of these things with you, and I hope you are well. God bless you.